good day to you and today what was seen was two were two children and they had uh, different they were intently looking at the ground or on some canvas and they had many instruments in their hands then i just got a thought this is samuel and david when they were small and the thought was following up from last morning's word of prophecy that every child is born with a uh, the blueprint on the canvas which we, they have to work with god and then the canopy is how god takes a silver thread and weaves the stars that they'll get famous for but in between is the campus of what the work they have to do canvas canopy and canvas ca campus and the canopy so the concept of the canvas is what god has written for our god scope every child is born with it and some parents know to work with it some don't and when we grow up also we want to work with the canvas of god in which he has from season to season let's say our first five years our next uh, now t t up to 10 years up to 15 years the building god wants to build and that is the campus the exercise of the work and canopy is out of it how our fame will come our reputation our influence god putting the stars there we don't have to worry about it that's not our curriculum canopy is god's business canvas is our business working together god and us is our campus of life so uh, so there was david and we know that he did a lot of work as a little fellow he had to look after the father's sheep he was the eighth eighth in the family and there were seven bigger brothers scowling at him and he had to work with the father's smelly sheep but he was always praising god thanking god and in due time david became more famous than the brothers and there was samuel from very small days he was in the tent of god uh, putting oil into the lamp of god can you imagine uh, samuel's little fingers putting oil and he kept up uh, as much as possible and then only he went to sleep and when he was about 12 years old maybe god began to speak to him samuel samuel then we remember moses uh, he, he was born at a very difficult time pharaoh wanted all the male jewish boys to be killed and moses was there for three months with the parents and then a judge bed had to make the difficult decision that this little fellow will have to be floated in the river nile and so judge bed chose one little and miriam one early morning went to the river nile with ned uh, with moses and fellow might have been hungry and he might have wanted to cry unfamiliar surroundings but uh, he bought the mother wove uh, uh, a boat a little basket with all the willows on the nile one by one they chose very carefully so that the the ark little ark will not sink and put moses into it you see put moses into it and floated him in the river nile and they they put pitch inside and outside and that was the beginning of the old covenant little boy getting floated in a little 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 wicker basket and then we remember another child who came for the second new second testament the new testament our lord jesus christ he was in a manger where where animal cattle he had their food and then we know the story of course with god's wind blew on moses and moses went in the direction on the river nile where pharaoh's daughter would come amazing wind of god amazing breath of god and moses was taken by the wind exactly to the place where pharaoh's daughter will come amazing base of god pharaoh's babe, daughter saw and this is a beautiful child and rest is history moses became grew up in the pharaoh's house knowing all egyptian art and craft and science and all uh, today we are going to look at another little boy uh, who was born not famous in fact he born he was born with a lot of difficulty 1 chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 jabez was more honorable than his brothers that's an anointing how you get more honorable than your brother and his mother named him jabez saying because i have i have him i bore him with pain 
Uh, so, the, for some reason, ma, for, for his mother, Jabez's birth brought pain. Of course, it might have been an obstructed labor, pain might have been physical, but we have no record of Jabez's uh, father. So, pain might have been emotional. Whatever it is, he was born with pain. Now, Jabez called on the God of Israel. Because Jabez meant pain, Yabez, meant, meant pain. So he knew from the beginning his mother thought he's a pain, or at least it was painful for the mother in that period of time. And so he prayed. And can you remember another child who was born in pain? R Rachel's son. Rachel's first son was Joseph, Yasef, God will add, she said. And then the second son to be born in which Rachel died. And she named him Ben Oni, son of my pain. But Jacob put it right and named him Ben Yamin, son of my right hand. So how can you become a son of God's right hand? You would bless me indeed and enlarge my border. So then Job is praying, God of Israel saying, Oh, that I, you would bless me. He is conscious that he had brought pain. Indeed, and enlarge my border. That's a canopy, enlarge. Only God can do that enlargement. And that you, your hand might be with me. That's what Job is asked. Oh, Lord, work with me. And that you would keep me from harm. That it may not pain me. He is conscious that he was born in pain. And God granted him what he requested. And we know, uh, there's a, the later uh, city was named uh, Jabez. It was a city of judges. So probably Jabez was the founder of the city. Imagine a little boy born in pain. Nobody knew him at that time. But later a city was named according to his name. Jabez. So God bless you. May you have a blessing like that in Jesus' precious name.